Yes, welcome back to the next one. We have velocity time graph. Previously, we have seen distance time graph. What is the use of distance time graph? Yes, of course, we can able to we can determine the speed of an object. And here we have velocity time graph. So in that velocity time graph, we can able to find out the distance. Distance. Here we can able to measure distance, right? And directly coming to here. So in y axis i have taken velocity and x axis i have taken as time uh, time in hours and velocity in kilometer per hour so velocity generally is displacement by time so displacement is kilometer and time as hour okay so look at the diagram here i have drawn starting from this point okay and this will go as a straight line yes there is no deviation so all are 30 km only here ok so this graph is not practically possible because at 0 seconds no no one object is moving with 30 km per hour right so that's why you make it here dotted dotted line ok try to assume that so it's, it's traveling in uniform uniform velocity so 30 km is moving in uniform velocity so looking back again this diagram so here the velocity is uniform right even though the time scale is increases in the x axis right so time increases but velocity remains same and here we can say that this is called uniform velocity we can say uniform velocity means velocity remains same but the time only changes so when you example if you are driving a car okay first one now you cover 40 km second one now you cover 40 km third one now you cover 40 km then we can say that you are traveling your car by uniform velocity right without changing any direction as in that without changing any direction three hours continuously you drive in straight way okay so this is the case we have this is called we are saying that uniform velocity so how we can uh, measure the distance traveled by an object here how we can measure the distance traveled by an object Yes, how in sense? We have the formula velocity into time is equal to displacement, right? That is a reverse case. Displacement by time is velocity. So velocity we have here and time we have in the x-axis. So we are multiplying velocity into time that will give displacement. Even sometimes in the textbook they are given as distance. The distance means the magnitude of displacement. Try to understand. In each and every case they are given as distance. That means the magnitude of displacement. Right? Okay. Now move on to we are going to calculate the displacement of this car. So the displacement of a car. Okay. How we can the displacement I can denote it here as S. S is equal to AC. What is called AC? Yes. Here the uniform velocity is right. In that point A, I have drawn one perpendicular line which meet at a point C in the x-axis. And similarly at point B I have chosen and draw one perpendicular line which meet at a point D. So what is AC? This one, right? So what is this? AC is indicating? This AC is almost this one, right? AC means this area. AC means velocity only. So this AC is indicating velocity. And what is called CD? Time scale, right? CD is time scale. So CD as we can write as T2 minus T1. So here the time taken is T1 and here the time taken is T2. So I can take the time taken as T2 minus T1. So here only we are going to calculate the distance traveled by an object. So initially it was at the velocity and final velocity at T2 second, it has a final velocity here. Anyway, it's moving, so we are going to calculate the distance. So how we can calculate the distance? 30 into T2 minus T1 that will give in terms of kilometer. And from the graph, how we can identify? Yes. Yes, this is equal to area of rectangle ABC. So this is the rectangle in shape, right? So what is the area? So this is length and this is breadth. So AC into CD that will give the area of triangle of ABC. From that way, we can be able to find out the displacement of the car or the distance of a car, right? It's clear? Okay. This is the case for uniform velocity. But now we are moving on to the accelerating. What is called accelerating? The velocity changes. Here the velocity remains same. But in that case the velocity is varied with respect to time. See look at here. Velocity increases. Time is also increases. So this is called that's why we are saying this graph as 
accelerator motion right that is not uniform motion accelerator motion non uniform velocity this is non uniform velocity this is uniform velocity so this one is accelerating particles so here also i am taking us y axis in velocity and x axis is time and this is we are saying that uniformly accelerated that means the velocity changes with respect to time is constant right yes it's clear so the distance of a car here how we can measure so here i have a b c d e so what is the shape of this one a b c d e yes this is just like rugby shape or otherwise we can take another of a b c as in the triangle form and a c d e is the form of rectangle actually if it look like square in sense i am sorry so this one is rectangle okay this is rectangle and this is triangle in shape so how we can measure the distance is from the point a to b of a moving object we are going to find out the distance so distance a is equal to area of abcde so what is abcde area of triangle abc so area of triangle abc plus area of rectangle acd so what is the formula for area of triangle half into breadth into height so 1 by 2 ac base and bc is height plus rectangle acd rectangle acd so length into breadth so ae into ac so ae into ec ec you can if you want is sorry ac right you can use ac or otherwise you can use ed both are same only right so from that way we can able to find out the distance of moving car and look at here this is uniformly accelerated right and here uniform velocity both are having different meaning uniform velocity means the car is moving with uniform velocity and here it is accelerated as uniformly a becomes constant here the velocity remains constant try to understand the both the diagram right i hope you understand well see you in the next video thank you